This video shows internal wave propagation in a rectangular tank. It was created for AOS 103, Introduction to Physical Oceanography, taught in the fall of 2020 at UCLA by Andrew Stewart, Jordan Moscoso, and Clara C. Internal waves are gravity waves, a lot like the waves you see at the surface, but instead they propagate within a fluid, generally where two layers of different densities meet. In this video, we'll explore what happens to an internal wave in a tank and see the difference between internal wave and surface wave propagation. So for this experiment, we'll need the following materials. A one meter rectangular tank, about 100 grams of sugar so that we can create a dense layer at the bottom, a pitcher of water so we can carefully pour in a surface layer, some food dye to show the layer interface, a couple of foam blocks to prop up the tank, 20 liters of water, and a rubber duck to visualize how waves move material across the surface. Now for the experimental setup. We begin by propping up the tank with a few foam blocks and adding 13 liters of water. We take some sugar and add about 100 grams to create a dense layer at the bottom of the tank. We do this so that we can have two layers of water inside the tank to see an internal wave pass between these layers. From here, we add the remaining seven liters of water dyed slightly blue so we can see the distinct line or interface between the top and bottom layers. Last but not least, we add a rubber duct to the lowered side of the tank so that we can see how waves move material across the surface. And now that we've set up everything, we can lower the left side of the tank by removing the foam blocks. Immediately when the left side is lowered, this is what the two layers of water will look like inside the tank. This type of density configuration is unstable, and now the question becomes, what happens to the fluid inside the tank so that it can reach an equilibrium? Well, if we consider the right side of the tank first, it contains more dense water, which is associated with a higher pressure. On the other hand, the left side of the tank has more of the lighter layer of fluid, which is associated with a lower pressure. This creates a pressure gradient force moving from right to left, and thus induces the direction of wave propagation from right to left. In reality, the wave will move from right to left until it reaches the other side of the tank and then reflect, move from left to right, and so on and so forth until the wave has been dissipated. Now it's time to move on to the experiment. I'll show a few different types here where I lift and lower the side of the tank, causing an internal wave to form. Here, I'm showing the video at about four times the recording rate. It might be a little bit difficult to see the internal wave move initially, but once it reflects, it's a little bit more clear. I'll pause the video here so that you can see the internal wave, shown as a bump or a disturbance between the two interfaces. And this is what we'll be looking for in all three experiments. So for this second experiment, I lift the other side so we can watch the wave propagate in the opposite direction. I slowed down the video rate to about twice the speed of the recording rate so that we can watch how the rubber duck moves at the surface. You can see here that the rubber duck moves in quasi-circles as the surface waves pass by. Waves in general do not tend to move material across the surface, although there is a wave-induced flow called Stokes Drift that does move the duck in the direction of wave propagation. So for this last experiment, I'll lift and lower the side of the tank really quickly so that I can show wave breaking. As you can see here, wave breaking does an efficient job at mixing the two different density layers. Like surface waves, internal waves can also break. And when they do, they mix layers of different densities in the ocean interior. That's it for this video. This video and all associated art was created by me, Jordan Moscoso, with experimental advising and design by Andrew Stewart. A huge thank you to the Atmospheric and Oceanic Sciences Department for providing the rectangular tank, and to the Marine Operations Center for a space to conduct this experiment. Finally, thank you to the DIY Dynamics team. To see other experiments of planetary fluid dynamics or oceanographic focuses, follow us on Twitter or visit our website listed above. Thanks for watching.